Well, good morning again, dear saints. Great to see you today. We're back at it again in February, the 7th of February today. And the psalm for today is Psalm 4, and we pick up in the Gospel of St. John in the second chapter in Jesus' first miracle, the wedding at Cana. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, let's jump into that psalm for today. Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayers. O men, how long shall my honor be turned into shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Be angry and do not sin. Ponder in your own hearts on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, who will show us some good? Lift up the light of your face upon us, O Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when grain and new wine abound. In peace, I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. This is quite different from the psalm yesterday where the psalmist was crying out again and again thinking God wouldn't answer and having these questions that couldn't be answered. This one we see a confidence. We see a confidence in who, in the person calling out, in the psalmist, calling out to God and yet the psalmist is still struggling with pressure from the outside. Answer me when when I call, O God of my righteousness. Do you see how he addresses God confidently in that? You have given me relief when I was in distress. Yesterday, at the end of the psalm, the psalmist reminded us that he was going to look back and see the faithfulness of God, and that's exactly what's going on. You have given me relief when I was in distress. Looking back and seeing what God has done. And as he pours out in the middle of the psalm, as he pours out his heart to God, When he gets to the end, he says this, In peace I will both lie down and sleep. And just before in the other psalms, we talk about pillows wet from our weeping and not being able to sleep. And here in the confidence, in the peace of God, he lies down and he sleeps in peace. What a great thing. What a great confidence to know that No matter what the world says, no matter what the pressures are that come against us, our identity is given to us by Christ. It is unchangeable by the word. He always keeps his promises. As we look back, we can certainly see his faithfulness in all these things. What a great gift that is for us and for all mankind. Well, let's jump into the gospel reading for today. In the second chapter of St. John's Gospel, we see the, the miracle that Jesus does first, the wedding at Cana in Galilee. <clears throat> On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does that have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So they took it. When the master of the feast tasted the wine, the water now become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called to the bridegroom and said to him, 
Everyone serves the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This is the first of his signs Jesus did at Cana in Galilee, and manifesting his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and his brothers and his disciples, and they stayed there for a few days. The very first miracle of Jesus, there are a number of things in here that really help us to understand who Jesus is. Any time in the gospel reading, we see things and we hear things in the gospels that trigger a memory. We should be paying attention to that. Right here at the beginning, if you, if you back up in the gospel of John, when it says here, on the third day, it is a little bit confusing what that means. But if you back up a little bit and just take the phrase on its own, what, is, what does that phrase say? On the third day. A day that certainly reminds us, that echoes in our ear that we should be paying attention. Because Jesus, in his ministry, is going to say what to his disciples? That he is going to be arrested. He is going to be betrayed. He is going to be turned over to the mobs. He is going to be crucified. And on the third day, he's going to rise again from the dead. Right here at the beginning, as we get in, these words, we would dismiss them quickly. But they echo back to us of what Jesus came to do. And right here at the beginning, as John is writing this, guided by the Holy Spirit, those words on, on the third day, Echo to the cross, to our hope, to the fulfillment of Jesus' ministry there as he begins his ministry here. There was a wedding. And we don't know a lot about the weddings in Cana in Galilee in that period of time. We, uh, we have some suspicions and we know some things. But most generally the wedding was a huge event. And it was not just a do the wedding and then do the reception and everybody goes home. A lot of times these weddings were a week long and everybody would be invited and everything was supplied for them at the wedding. Everything, clothing, shoes, housing, it was all supplied. They came and all they did for that week was receive. That's really important for us as we understand the whole concept of why this miracle was first. Why did Jesus go to the wedding and do his first miracle there? Well, dear saints, when you look at the whole ministry of Jesus, when you look at everything that's going on, St. Paul gives us a very good glimpse of what this miracle means here at the beginning. St. Paul, in Ephesians chapter 5, has given some of the best advice for husbands and wives as they come together in one union. And he reminds us that husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church. And wives, they are submit to their husbands. You see in the middle of this right here, what happens is Jesus is starting off this ministry. And, and St. John is reminding us of the third day. And here is the image of a marriage. And that image is going to be all the way through the scriptures. Christ is the bridegroom. His church, that's us. We are the bride. It is he who makes us spotless. It is he who gives the good gifts. It is he who loves us so much that he would give his very life and lay that down so that his bride might be spotless and without wrinkle. And what does he do here at this wedding? He honors everyone who's there. The groom is there and the bride is there and whoever's putting on the wedding feast and what happens? There is embarrassment coming. They run out of wine. And what does Jesus do? Asked by his mother, he provides the best. Not just a little wine, but a lot of wine. Six water jars to the top, completely full of the best wine that you can imagine. Better than any California wine or any foreign wine. This is the best. And the one who's putting on the banquet, he, he is amazed. He said, well, usually the people serve the, the good wine first when everybody's sober. And then when they don't care anymore, then they serve the sloppy stuff. No. Jesus has the good wine later. The best wine is reserved for us. 
the best wine as he joins us as man and wife in this union that he honors by his, his guests, by his being a presence here, by being a guest at the wedding. The best reserved for us is one day, this suffering that we're in, because of our groom who has made us perfect, we will go to heaven and we will experience all the greatness and the perfectness of a life without sin. When we look at the wedding here and we see one more thing, we see Mary, Jesus' mother, saying, do, what he, do whatever he tells you. I believe this is the last place in the Holy Scriptures where we hear Mary speak. It's important that we would listen to that. Do whatever he tells you. And all the way through the scriptures, we see Jesus and others saying about him, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Live in this peace and forgiveness of sins that Jesus has given to us. Repent. Recognize your sin. Recognize that our bridegroom has paid the price for that and he has made us holy and perfect by his blood and live in that perfect union of God and man, of Jesus the groom and his bride the church. Live in that in peace and joy and hope. Just like the celebration here, the first miracle of Jesus at the wedding in, the Cana, in Cana in Galilee. Well, this is the gospel reading for today. Thanks be to God. If we look at uh, where do we go from here, where in the catechism does it deal with the wedding in the Cana in Galilee? Well, we would go to the sixth commandment. You shall not commit adultery. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we lead a sexually pure and decent life in what we say and do, and husband and wife love and honor each other. Now, we have to take just a moment with the sixth commandment. Because when we read this, if you remember the rest of the commandments and what Jesus says, or what, excuse me, what Dr. Luther says, he usually starts off the what does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not. And then he goes on to explain what we are not to do. In the sixth commandment, he doesn't do that. We should fear and love God so that we lead a sexually pure and decent life. You see right here in this commandment, Luther takes marriage back even before the fall into sin. He takes it all the way back to the Garden of Eden where he made, his, he made the man and his wife, the bride, and he brought them together. He takes us back to marriage before sin came into the world. And the picture of marriage was perfect with Adam and Eve before sin. And that's what he draws us back to here as well. He takes us back to the perfectness of the bride and the groom together forever to receive their goodness from God. We pray. Father, we thank you again for our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for his many miracles. We thank you most importantly that he is our bridegroom and that we are his bride. That his blood from the cross covers us and makes us holy and pure without spot or blemish. We pray, dear Father, that you would continue to strengthen us in all things, that we may listen and hear, that we may live in repentance and peace, that we may live in the holiness of being the bride of Christ. Strengthen us today in all that we do, and hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, enjoy your day, dear saints. I will join you here again tomorrow. Go in his peace.